National Nature Reserves are the jewels in the crown of British wildlife sites. They're the, the best of the best. And Skipworth Common National Nature Reserve, to me, typifies exactly what National Nature Reserves are about. It's got that special wildlife, it's got the connection with the past, whether it's been shaped by Bronze Age or Iron Age activities, right through to the Second World War interest. This landscape actually provides the perfect backdrop to the story of Bomber Command in World War II. During the Second World War, the country was split up into separate groups for Bomber Command in order to take the war into Europe. With the introduction of Air Chief Marshal Sir Arthur Harris, Bomber Harris, he devised a plan in which he would uh, concentrate bombing on the German cities uh, in, in the same way that the Luftwaffe had concentrated its uh, attacks on London, Coventry, Plymouth and Hull. Around York, there were two bomber command groups, number six and number four. And Rick Hall was in number four group bomber command. Apart from the operational stations, uh, there obviously needed to be a huge amount of training. Training aircrew in itself was a highly dangerous operation. You're dealing with um, uh, aircraft uh, which generally speaking, were not the best condition. They tended to use the, the aircraft that had been uh, crashed and rebuilt and uh, weren't in the tip-top condition of the frontline troops. The instructors actually, in many, many cases, said that it was more dangerous training than it was, in fact, um, going out on operational missions over occupied territory. This is borne out by the fact that uh, during its, its life, over 114 um, people were killed in, in flight training uh, accidents in Rickall al alone. I went to Rickall on uh, New Year's Day, 1944. As flight engineer, it wasn't very exciting. The pilot had all the work to do, learning how to really handle the aeroplane. The Halifax bombers, of course, they were old and vulnerable to all sorts of things going wrong, and there were a number of accidents. We did lose them. There was the one that sadly hit the church tower in Selby, which was terrible. When the Halifax bomber first came, we were all there to watch. We were so fascinated. It was lovely. It was sad, really, because there was a war on, wasn't there? But we didn't look at it like that. It was just a new era to us. The interesting thing about Rickall was the fact that even though it was a training unit, it was actually used operationally, particularly when numbers were scarce and the Bomber Command Offensive was at its height. Certainly with well-trained and good students and the existing experienced staff, Rickall did take part in quite a number of operational missions into Germany. When the Air Force was going over to Germany, we used to count them going over, and you could tell when they was loaded with bombs. They were droned, it was a terrible drone. And then we used to try and count them coming back, but we never got the same number. No, no. It wasn't very nice to think that some lads had gone. We lost 10,000 in the six months that I was on operations. I got away with 38 in that time. But my two best friends were lost after doing about 10 or 12. That's one thing about the Air Force. People got killed, you lost them, possibly on ops. But there was never a church service to commemorate it, nothing like that. No mourning whatsoever. They just weren't there anymore, you know. They did tell us your life expectancy is about 10 weeks once you go to squadron. Which was a bit frightening, but well, hell, we'd signed up for it, that was it, you know. Um, we probably weren't, weren't going to survive the war anyway. It, w it, was, it was fatalistic in a way. I mean, as a youngster of, of 15, I knew that eventually I was going to go into services and chances were I'd get killed, you know. It was a funny thing. You, know, you can say it was bravado if you like, but you just didn't let it worry you. There's no sense in worrying. If it's going to happen, it'll happen. No sense in worrying about it, so we didn't. 
The bum bays are an interesting feature on Skipworth Common because obviously at one point that was the area where bombs were stored before they were rolled up the banks and onto waiting lorries to be brought down onto the aircraft waiting on the runways. And over the years, since they've been sort of left and become derelict, they've provided homes for some of the wildlife like grass snakes and common lizards have found sunning themselves on the warm bricks and have found a winter home moving down into the high binoculars to spend the winter. So it's a really nice example of how nature is slowly reclaiming some of these areas and how the common actually acts as a living memorial for those that have made the ultimate sacrifice. On Skipworth Common we've got a number of rare plant species as well. One is the royal fern, which is probably a couple of hundred years old. So again, it's interesting to think that that's seen so many changes over that time from being an open common landscape to being wooded up to being cleared in the Second World War so the aircraft could thunder up and down the runways. And now it's seen through the Nature Conservation Management of Eskrit Park Estate and Natural England, the heathland being reverted back again. So it's sort of very much modern day history that that's been able to watch over 200 years. But we've also got some other plant species on Skipworth Lake marsh gentian which is only known from two sites in the Vale of York, both heathlands and the beauty about Skipworth marsh gentians are they're right next to the runway. They're probably there because of the nutrients leaching out of the concrete but it also means that people can very easily walk straight up on a nice path and engage with what is a plant that you don't see in many places. The common here is grazed by a selection of old traditional breeds, things like Hebridean sheep and the Exmoor ponies and English longhorn cattle. And they have a job to do, they're a conservation tool. They do a very good job of keeping some of the vegetation in check that we need to keep in check to help keep the birch woodland from taking over and to maintain the open heath. Skipworth Common is important for a number of heathland specialities, so birds such as nightjars and tree pipits, which are only really found on these sort of areas of lowland wet and dry heath. We've got special plants such as the sundew, which can be found next to the bombays, which are a tiny little plant that are actually carnivorous, so they've got sticky little tips to the stems which catch insects to get the protein that they can't get out of the ground. One of the features of interest we've got on Skipworth Common is that it's scattered with small ponds, which were all another sort of human activity of peat cutting for fuel in previous generations. And that activity has again shaped some of the special wildlife that we get on the common. And those ponds are now home to lots of things such as amphibians and birds, and some of our fantastic, amazing invertebrates such as dragonflies. And just watching dragonflies on a hot sunny evening in the summer as they manage to sort of dart in and out, catching other insects, hovering, flying backwards, it brings home the marvel of flight and how the natural world has perhaps shaped some of the modern day flight that we see today. So as we're sat here today, it's hard to imagine sitting here in 1945 and the roar of Halifax bomber engines as they hurtled up and down the runway, the noise and the hustle and bustle of vehicles and airmen running around, uh, the smell of aviation fuel and perhaps today what we've got is a living memorial. There's still signs like the buildings behind us that are slowly being taken back by nature and providing a home for nature. So these national nature reserves have been shaped by people over the generations. And they are what they are. They're national nature reserves. They are for the nation. And we want people to use them and enjoy them and reconnect with the natural environment. It was pretty clear by the end of 1945 that these sites were no longer in use. And uh, you go around today and see just marks on a map and the odd building which is recognisable as a Ministry of Defence type. But I think at Rickall it's exceptionally poignant as it goes back into nature and carries with it the thoughts and the spirits 
of all those young men who did their bit to save our liberty and save our democracy in Europe. And uh, nature has, if you like, joined hands with those uh, spirits of those guys in order to take us forward into the next century. <laughs>